Russia fired missiles on a reservoir that has no military value at all, just value to hundreds of thousands of ordinary citizens. This is another reason Russia will lose, lose this war and lose face in history. Well, Alexei Muraviev is an associate professor of national security and strategic studies at Curtin University in Australia, and he joins us now live from Perth. Welcome to the News Hour. How would you describe what we're seeing on the battlefield there in Ukraine? Are these really revenge attacks, as President Zelensky is calling them? Look, I, I think it's, uh, I wouldn't describe them as revenge attacks. I think it's a, perhaps an indication that Russia is changing its, its tactic and, and is becoming more, in the, uh, more indiscriminate in its targeting. Certainly the attack on uh, Krivo Rig and, 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 and the dam over there has two purposes. One is political. I think it's a signal to Zelensky because it's his uh, boat town that uh, mm -hmm. he is within uh, within the site, and perhaps he may be next uh, if if Russia will continue with its uh, current strategy. And and the second one, I mean, it may sound a bit surprising, but it actually has pure military reasons because whilst um, uh, the damage sustained to the dam caused massive flooding, including flooding to the civilian infrastructure, the principal aim of the attack was actually to flood the river. Uh, which uh, uh, crosses the south of the country in the Kherson region, and by that, compromise Ukraine's ability to uh, to use pontoons as river crossings uh, that support their um, uh, offensive operations against Russian forces in the Kherson and Zaporizhia region. So the Russians are actually trying to destroy or compromise the logistical line of supply of of the Ukrainian forces by using unorthodox tactics. So the, I think it's a bit of a mixed uh, mixed reaction, but okay. certainly the attack on, on Kriva Rik also followed a string of attacks on, on the power supply stations across eastern Ukraine mm -hmm. with the name to create blackouts and by that lower the morale of the Ukrainians. And so that, that is, again, civilian infrastructure. Is, is that, do you think, going to be uh, the tactic now uh, used by Russia just to keep targeting civilian infrastructure? Look, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard to predict what Russia's next move is going to be and what Putin has on his mind. He is under severe barrage of criticism for effectively losing the battle in the Kherson region, uh, even though the Russians use very cleverly uh, worded words about streamlining the front line and regrouping forces. Everyone in Russia understands it's a, it's a military and political defeat. So there is uh, there are, there are increasing calls and there is increasing pressure on the Kremlin to actually turn the tide of war and start as as the Russian describes, start taking the war seriously and stop pretending some sort of a special military okay. operation rather than a full scale war. That, that, so that that's an interesting point that you make there about the terminology. Do do you think? that President Putin will call it a war and not a special military operation? And also, how do you fix the issue of morale and, and, and the will among the Russian fighters right now? Look, morale can be fixed the, the same way how it was fixed on the Ukrainian side, by delivering victories. In terms of change of terminology, well, Putin showed arrogance and, and a bit of stubbornness, and certainly he is not the guy that um, easily admits his own mistakes. So that there is this uh, uh, continuous line coming from the Kremlin by inertia that everything is fine, everything is under control, everything is going according to the plan. But clearly something had to be done if Russia um, uh, wants to carry on with the fight and it doesn't want to enter political negotiations, which, which will be political suicide for Putin right now. That means it has to adjust tactics, it has to bolster uh, troop numbers and perhaps apply different pressure on, on Ukraine also by, as I said before, intensifying uh, aerial strikes, uh, cruise missile strikes, including on, on civilian targets, uh, by bearing in mind that uh, Ukraine, just like Russia, is entering uh, autumn and uh, the weather is uh, changing, it's getting colder, so the Russians may try to actually take, take change in weather conditions and use it to their advantage by creating more difficulties and more, and more problems for the Ukrainians and by that trying to create, um, uh, to try to damage the morale which is currently on the rise in Ukraine as a result of their successful counteroffensive. Alexei Muraviev, thank you so much for joining us there from Curtin University in Australia, Perth.